on this episode of Repair Geek, how to get cool, dry, compressed air for cheap. All right, so I'm gonna be going about drying my compressed air two different ways. First way is gonna be with an after cooler that I mounted here on the side of my air compressor. And the second way is gonna be with this cooling coil after the air exits the tank. In a traditional compressor, what you normally have is you have the compressor head and it discharges directly into the tank. Since I modified my compressor, it actually, you have the air that discharges out of the tank. It runs through this after cooler. I'm using an automatic transmission cooler for a car to do this. As it runs back and forth, any moisture that's contained in that hot air condenses. And when it condenses out, it's liquid water. Well, you don't want to go dumping liquid water back into the tank, so you put a water separator after the after cooler and before the tank. So all that water gets collected in that water separator. I'll say this, this collects probably 80% of the moisture out of my system. Uh, the water separator that I have over here has an auto, auto drain on it. It has a float inside, so once it reaches a certain threshold, it'll automatically drain out any moisture that's in it. The second thing I'm using over here is this cooling coil. So the air comes into the bottom and it runs back and forth through these series of copper pipes and then it discharges out to the system. Well, as the air runs back and forth through the coil, it's doing the same thing as the after cooler. Any moisture that's contained in any hot air that actually makes it into the cooling coil is going to condense out and drop down to the bottom. On the bottom of each one of these legs, I have a ball valve. So every once in a while, I'll come over and crack the ball valve on each one of these and drain any moisture out. Now, if I was going to paint a car, I would still use some sort of a desiccant dryer or a traditional uh, plug-in electric air dryer to uh, reduce the amount of moisture in my compressed air. Uh, this won't do, this isn't going to get it 100% dry. It's going to remove the vast majority. So, like I said, either use some sort of desiccant dryer or a traditional air dryer if you're going to be painting cars on a frequent basis. All right, so as far as testing what I've installed here, what I did was I started the compressor up when it was dead cold, ran it up to 150 PSI just before it shut off at 175, and when it hit 150, I plugged in a die grinder, zip tied the, the die grinder on, and let it run for five minutes. So these temperature readings that I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take temperature readings off the cylinder head, the discharge, temperature out of the cylinder head and the inlet to the tank. So you'll be able to see firsthand what it is before and after on each test. Um, I didn't do it on the same day so the temperature outside is a little bit different so I'm sure the humidity is a little bit different so it's not a scientific test per se but it gives you a good idea of how much moisture and heat you're going to reduce with this. Uh, in my original test, I did have the cooling coil installed, and I didn't catch it, and I didn't think to record it, but after the test, I went through and cracked each ball valve on the bottom of the cooling coil, and I, can, I got water out of the cooling coil. So I was definitely getting moisture through my water separator that's on the tank, and at least probably through this one as well. I cleaned this one out afterward. There was a little bit of water in it, not a ton, but after doing this test with the after cooler on the compressor, I had nothing come out of the cooling coil and nothing in the water separator in the line.
Alright guys, so after about five minutes, that's what I ended up with. Alright guys, that's everything I have on my air dryer setup. If I only had to choose one of these to do, without question, I would do the after cooler. Reason being, because I'm getting the moisture out of the air before it goes into the tank, my tank la would last a much longer period of time. Also, it's removing far more moisture than what this cooling coil is. I know there's other ways to do this. I've seen guys take 55 gallon drums and run a coil of copper in the 55 gallon drum and fill that drum full of water. I didn't want a 55 gallon drum full of water sitting around and between these two that was about as good of a way as I could see of doing it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing it that way, it's just this is the way I did it. So for you guys that are interested in replicating what I have here, I have links down in the description to the cooler that I used the water separator, the, the lines, the plumbing, that sort of stuff. You can source a lot of this stuff locally. The only thing you may not be able to get locally is the transmission cooler. Uh, this one I have in particular has AN fittings on it that you use with any copper flare or any style of AN fitting or hydraulic fitting, anything like that. I know there's two different angles on those flared fittings. There's a 45 and I think like a 37 degree so you got to make sure you have the correct fittings for what you're working with. Um, anyway, back to this cooler. The cooler itself is the tubes are made of copper and the fins are aluminum. So there won't be any issue with dissimilar metals because everything I have here is going through copper or brass. So hopefully it should last a long time. If it doesn't and I have issues, I will tell you guys down in the comments. Um, but yeah, with that, if you guys like the video, as always, hit like and be sure and subscribe. Thanks for watching.